Hey guys, and welcome to How to Gastro. So in today's video, we'll be discussing quite an interesting topic, and that is, what is a bilirubin blood test? So let's get started. So before we get into the specifics of the bilirubin blood test itself, let's talk a little bit about what you can expect when your doctor orders this blood test for you. So a bilirubin blood test is a simple test that can be done at your closest laboratory or hospital. No special preparation is needed for a bilirubin blood test, which means you don't have to fast so you can eat and drink as usual before the test. During the test, a blood sample will be collected from you, which means a needle will be inserted into a vein, usually in your arm, to draw out some blood into a gold top or SST blood tube. This blood tube is then sent off to the laboratory where it is analysed and resulted. So what is bilirubin? So bilirubin is a yellowish substance produced during the normal breakdown of red blood cells. It forms when haemoglobin, the part of red blood cells that carries oxygen, is broken down. After its formation, bilirubin is transported to the liver where it is processed and conjugated with glucuronic acid to make it more water-soluble so that it can be excreted into the bile. So the bile is stored in the gallbladder and eventually released into the small intestine, helping in the digestion of fats. So we're going to dive a bit deeper into the heme catabolism in the next slide, but basically all you need to know from this slide is that bilirubin is this yellowish substance that is produced when the red blood cells are broken down. And the form that is produced here is the unconjugated form or the indirect form. And then this form of bilirubin goes to the liver where it becomes conjugated or the direct form of bilirubin so that it becomes water soluble and can be excreted out of the body. So there are two main types of bilirubin. Firstly, we have the unconjugated or indirect form. And this is the form of bilirubin that is not yet processed by the liver and is not water soluble and it travels in the bloodstream bound to albumin, a protein that helps transport it to the liver so that it can become conjugated. Then we have the conjugated or direct bilirubin. So once the liver processes bilirubin, it becomes conjugated, making it water soluble. And this form of bilirubin is then excreted into the bile and eventually eliminated from the body through the stool and small amounts through the urine as well. So now that we know what bilirubin is, let's take a closer look at what happens during heme catabolism. So this is actually quite a cool schematic representation of the entire heme catabolism process or the breaking down of heme. So first we have these senescent erythrocytes, which basically means aged red blood cells, and they are disassociated into heme and globin. Then we have heme oxygenase, which is an enzyme that hydrolates heme into biliverdine. And then biliverdine is then reduced or converted into unconjugated bilirubin or indirect bilirubin by the biliverdine reductase enzyme. So now we have this yellow component, which is the unconjugated bilirubin or the indirect bilirubin. So following this, we have these bilirubin albumin complexes, which basically means that the albumin, which is a protein that's found in the blood, carries these little bilirubin substances. And the unconjugated bilirubin is transported in the blood bound to albumin to the hepatocytes. So these are the hepatocytes, which basically are the liver cells. So in the hepatocytes, we have an enzyme called glucuronyl transferase, which then conjugates the bilirubin, making it water-soluble, meaning that it's now called conjugated or direct bilirubin. And then this conjugated bilirubin is then secreted into the bile through the bile ducts and can be stored in the gallbladder. And then when needed, the gallbladder will secrete the bile into the small intestine or the duodenum. And then thereafter, we see that bilirubin will leave the body in the urine as urobilinogen and in the feces after it is converted to stercobilin, which is responsible for the brown color of the feces in humans. 
So this is basically what happens during the entire process of the hemoglobin breakdown, which is constantly occurring in the body. And that's how we get this bilirubin or this yellow substance that is being produced. So now that we know what bilirubin is, and we know the process of heme catabolism, let's take a closer look at what the bilirubin blood test is all about. So a bilirubin blood test measures the levels of bilirubin in your blood. So it is often used to help diagnose and monitor liver function, detect hemolytic anemia, which is a condition where red blood cells are broken down too quickly, and to evaluate bile duct obstructions. So there are actually three types of bilirubin that is tested in the bilirubin blood test, which means the blood test typically measures the total bilirubin, the direct bilirubin, and the indirect bilirubin. So the total bilirubin is the sum of both the unconjugated or indirect form of bilirubin and the conjugated or direct form of bilirubin present in the blood. The direct bilirubin measures the conjugated form of bilirubin, which means that this is the bilirubin that has already been processed by the liver and is water soluble. And it also measures the indirect bilirubin, which is the unconjugated form, which has not yet been processed by the liver and is not yet water soluble. So now let's take a closer look at the normal ranges of bilirubin in the blood. So the normal range of the total bilirubin in the blood in normal healthy adults ranges from 0.1 to 1.2 milligrams per deciliter of blood, or this can also be expressed as 1.7 to 20.5 micromoles per liter of blood. So the total bilirubin levels can be higher in newborns, often up to 5 milligrams per deciliter or more, especially in the first few days of life. And the total bilirubin levels are usually higher in newborns due to the immature liver's reduced ability to process bilirubin at the time. So the normal range of the direct or conjugated bilirubin in normal healthy adults is 0.1 to 0.3 milligrams per deciliter, or this can also be expressed as 1.7 to 5.1 micromoles per liter of blood. And the normal range for the indirect or unconjugated bilirubin in normal healthy adults typically falls between the range of 0.2 to 0.8 milligrams per deciliter, which can also be expressed as 3.4 to 13.7 micromoles per liter of blood. So the indirect or unconjugated bilirubin range is usually calculated by subtracting the amount we've obtained for the direct bilirubin from the total bilirubin amount. And this will leave us with what's left, which is the unconjugated bilirubin in the blood. So now that we know what the normal ranges look like, let's take a closer look at some abnormal ranges of bilirubin in the blood. So abnormally high bilirubin levels is a condition known as hyperbilirubinemia and can indicate various underlying health issues. The specific implications depend on whether the elevation is in the direct or conjugated bilirubin or in the indirect or unconjugated bilirubin, or both perhaps in some cases. So I haven't actually added it onto the slide, but I just wanted to go through a few symptoms that are common in patients who have high bilirubin levels. So usually these patients are jaundiced, which means they present with yellowing of the skin and the whites of the eye. So the sclera usually has this yellowish tinge to it, and so does their skin. They will also be experiencing dark urine due to the high level of bilirubin in their urine. They will have pale stools. So usually these patients also present with paler or lighter colored stools. They will also be suffering from severe itching. So as the bilirubin actually deposits into the skin, it does become quite uncomfortable, and so these patients will suffer from severe itching. And then these patients will also have fatigue and abdominal pain, especially if there's a liver disease that is associated with this high level of bilirubin. So I basically just wanted to cover the five common symptoms that usually affect patients with high bilirubin levels. So going back to our slide here, what are the causes of elevated, indirect, or unconjugated bilirubin? So there are four main reasons that cause this. So number one is hemolysis. 
So here we have an increased breakdown of the red blood cells as seen in cases of hemolytic anemia, sickle cell disease, or blood transfusion reactions. Number two is Gilbert syndrome. And this is quite a common but usually harmless genetic condition where the liver has a difficulty in processing bilirubin. At number three, we have krigler najjar syndrome. And this is a rare genetic disorder affecting the liver's ability to process bilirubin. And then at number four, we have newborn jaundice, which is common in newborns due to the immature liver's inability to process bilirubin effectively. So these are the four main causes that cause elevated, unconjugated bilirubin or elevated, indirect bilirubin in the blood. So moving along, let's talk a little bit about the causes of elevated direct bilirubin, which is the conjugated form of bilirubin in the blood. So here the diseases can be broken down into two main categories, liver diseases and bile duct obstruction diseases. So in liver diseases, we have conditions like hepatitis, which is the inflammation of the liver caused by viruses such as hepatitis A, B, C, D, or E. We also have alcoholic hepatitis, or autoimmune conditions that can cause inflammation in the liver, raising the conjugated levels of bilirubin. We can also have liver cirrhosis. So this is when we have chronic liver damage, often due to long-term alcohol abuse, long-standing hepatitis, or long-standing fatty liver disease. And we can have liver tumors or metastatic cancers. So cancerous growths that can obstruct the bile ducts or damage liver cells will also cause elevated direct or conjugated bilirubin in the blood report. So moving on to the bile duct obstruction diseases, here we have gallstones. So gallstones that may be blocking the bile ducts prevents bilirubin from being excreted, leading to higher levels of conjugated bilirubin in the blood. We can also have cholangitis, which is the inflammation of the bile ducts. And we can have pancreatic or biliary tumors which includes tumors which press down or block on the bile ducts, thereby leading to higher levels of conjugated bilirubin in the blood. So moving along with even more causes for abnormally high bilirubin levels, here we have three causes for mixed bilirubin elevation, which means these are pathological processes that elevate both the conjugated and the unconjugated forms as well as the total bilirubin in the blood report. So causes of mixed bilirubin elevations include diseases like liver failure. So here we have severe liver dysfunction that may cause both direct and indirect bilirubin to rise. We can have severe infections such as sepsis, which can impair the liver function, raising both the direct and indirect forms of bilirubin. And at number three, we have drug-induced liver injury. And this is when certain medications or toxins can damage the liver, leading to elevated bilirubin levels in both the direct and indirect forms. So now that we've explored all the possibilities of abnormally high bilirubin levels in a blood report, let's take a closer look at what causes abnormally low bilirubin levels. So abnormally low bilirubin levels are generally less common and are less clinically significant than elevated levels. Low bilirubin levels are typically not associated with specific diseases or conditions, and they usually don't indicate a health problem on their own. However, in certain contexts, they may be noted. So the first cause of abnormally low bilirubin levels is the use of certain medications. So some drugs such as the barbiturates, caffeine, and certain non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs can lower bilirubin levels. In addition to this, ascorbic acid or vitamin C, which is taken in high doses, may also reduce bilirubin levels in a blood report. At number two, we have chronic kidney disease. So in some cases, chronic kidney disease may be associated with lower bilirubin levels, although the exact mechanism is not well understood. At number three, we have an increased excretion. So conditions that cause increased bilirubin excretion, such as hyperthyroidism, may lead to lower circulating bilirubin levels, although this is not commonly observed. 
At number four, we have lifestyle factors. So intensive physical exercise can occasionally be associated with lower bilirubin levels. And finally, at number five, we have a low fat diet. So a diet extremely low in fat might reduce bowel production and consequently the bilirubin levels as well. And so the take home message. So as we have just seen, the bilirubin blood test is a vital component of medical diagnostics due to its ability to provide essential information about liver function, red blood cell turnover, and bowel duct health. It aids in the early detection and management of a wide range of conditions from liver diseases and hemolytic disorders to bowel duct obstructions and neonatal jaundice. Its inclusion in routine health screenings and its role in monitoring disease progression underscore its importance in maintaining overall health and well-being. And that brings us to the end of this video. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you found this presentation very interesting and informative. Please make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and share this video with some of your friends in the medical community. So if you want to encourage me to do even more, or to say thanks for all the free information you've received on my channel today, you can say thank you by clicking down in the description box below to buy me a coffee. Take care and have an awesome day further. Bye for now.